Welcome, everybody. You don't hear me? Because you don't have the sound on, maybe. Huh? It's important that my panelist is hearing me, otherwise it will be difficult. I do. So you hear me. Excellent. Xavier? As well. Very good. So welcome, everybody. My name is Carola Pustili, and I'm very proud to be the segment president of electricity companies for Schneider Electric. So being uh, the uh, electricity company segment president means that I'm spending my waking life to make my customer more profitable and reducing the carbon footprint. And we are covering the whole ecosystem of electricity companies, power generation, transmission, distribution and retail. So how many of you were on the, um, the speech of Jean Pascal yesterday morning? Can you raise your hand? Okay, quite a lot of people, very good. You heard about him talking about a lot of companies committing to uh, uh, decrease, to keep the rise of the global warming below one and a half percent. So electricity companies has a very key role in achieving this objective. And today what we're going to talk about is how can this sustainability and this, this work we are doing to reduce, uh, to be sustainable, also bring business. And I'm very lucky to have a couple of thought leaders in these areas in, uh, in, the, uh, in the room. So let me introduce, uh, oh, I forgot this one. Uh, let me introduce Xavier Yu from Schneider Electric, who is our VP for Group Environment. We also have from uh, Iberdrola, Carlos, and you are responsible for smart mobility amongst others, and we have Ricardo Perez, and you are heading the technology, technology portfolio and the sustainability in the circular economy, at least. So thank you very much, gentlemen, to be on stage with me. We want this session to be uh, uh, interactive, so we'll ask some questions to the audience, but don't hesitate to intervene and ask questions yourself. Do we have a mic somewhere? A mic for the audience? We should have a mic somewhere. Yes, there we have. So someone will be running around if you have some questions. Very good. So, let's see. Greta Thunberg. Who knows Greta Thunberg? Raise your hand. Many people. It's quite amazing how this uh, young Swedish lady has been able to move the public and put pressure on governments being in the United Union, really screaming, we need to do something now. And, and this is close to my heart because this was actually me some 40 years ago. I was very passionate about sustainability. I was very vocal about how should we reduce the hole in the ozone layer. I don't remember, I don't know if you remember that. So, uh, so yeah, it was some, yeah, some 40 years ago. At that time, we didn't have internet, I would say thank God, by the way. So my voice was only uh, reached the Swedish radio and my fame was uh, restrained to my village of 2,000 people. And to be honest, I'm happy about that because I was more passionate and my solutions was a little bit radical. But anyway, uh, I kept my passion for sustainability and that's a little bit why I'm here today with you on this panel, and that's why I'm working for Schneider as well, because they are sharing, I'm sharing, and Schneider is sharing my values of doing something for the planet, just not only money, but really doing something for the planet. And for the segment of utilities, and uh, you know that very well, uh, what we can do for the utilities to help them to reduce the carbon footprint uh, by digitizing the grid and being able to integrate more renewables in the grid. So the pushback at that time was a lot about while well, sustainability costs a lot of money. And thank God today we are talking about the cost of not being sustainable. So, so Carlos, I, I stole one of the pictures from Iberdrola talking about the cost of non-sustainability. Because the climate change is not only a threat to people and, and the environment, it's a huge threat also to the economical stability. The, the draft, the uh, extreme weather conditions, uh, all this is creating uh, a huge pressure on the economics as well. And uh, we see that if the, sun level, uh, the sea level is rising, continue to rising, we'll have 350 million people that need to move from the coastal areas. And we also know that the Un United Union is saying that be, uh, be aware that if we don't do anything now, 
we will have some more 100 million people pushed into poverty between now and 2030. So this is urgent not only for the environment, it's urgent also for the economical stability. But today we're going to talk about what more positive things. So what can actually sustainability and uh, a, a better management of the planet bring as business? So you see uh, here you have some examples from our uh, panelists on what we are doing uh, and what Enel and Iberdrola is doing for the planet. And today we are going to talk about uh, exactly how we help the planet to be a better place at the same time as we are doing better business. So I prepared some questions for you gentlemen. The first one is about what do you think is the biggest driver uh, for decarbonization of the planet and what are you doing about it? And maybe Carlos, you would like to start answering this question? Okay, thank you very much, <coughs> Carola, and it's my pleasure to to be with all of you today <coughs> just to try to express uh, how proud I, I, I am to be working for Iberdrola, which is, I think, a kind of pioneer in nowadays of being uh, involved in uh, renewables. Yeah. Um, I think that the drivers uh, for decarbonization are electrification and uh, renewables because if we want to electrif electrify the economy, it is uh, mandatory as well to be together with the renewables. So I think that that's the core of decarbonization. That's why we, we are committed to the uh, sustainability uh, development uh, goals of the United Nations, and one of the the, the main uh, goal that we that we try to to follow is the goal of electrification of the economy, um, and uh, in, in this in this uh, goal, uh, the main uh, space to be done in the future years are the electrification of transportation and residential. I think that that's where we can do a lot of things. Mm. We had a dream, some, that, that's something that someone else said some years ago, but we can <laughs> use it that same expression. We had a dream some 25 years ago, so we can say that Iberdrola started the energy transition some 25 years ago. So that's why today we are world leaders in renewables and we are proud to, to, to do what you were expressing before. I mean, if maybe many of you know about shared value theory of Michael Porter. And, yes. and that, that means that we, we, we are not making businesses uh, from here and then trying to do some social responsibility actions somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I think that we can align nowadays our commitment with our main business and we create at the same time economical value, social value and uh, environmental value. And it's all aligned in the same, in the same row. I mean, we, we do the same thing, we do the three, thi uh, the three things but doing our main business, our core business. And that's the good news because we can be proud of uh, uh, being changing the planet by, do, by doing our main business. And uh, talking about electrification uh, of transportation, that is my main uh, uh, activity at and, the moment. And passion, I think. And no? passion, yeah. yes, that, that, that's, uh, that's it. Uh, I'm passionate about that. Uh, I, I've been involved in that in this business for almost 10 years, and my experience and the experience of our team is really very very exciting. Mm. But um, I we we try uh, to electrify to contribute. We say that we help OEMs to sell electric cars. Mm -hmm. uh, our contribution is, uh, I think, important, essential, because we provide green energy for the charging, for charging the cars, and we provide charging uh, solutions mm. uh, for electric, uh, electrical transportation. So that's, that's what we are doing. We, we do that for our customers, but we also do that for Iberdrola, and we 
help to electrify all our premises, all our uh, offices, and we also have schemes uh, to help and to uh, encourage our uh, employees to change to electromobility. That's why we provide charging points in the offices and that's why we provide some incentives for them to buy electric, electric car. cars and we also have corporate electric car sharing schemes yeah. in our so this is uh, this is uh, in my opinion but another point that i would like to emphasize that, that is that uh, i think the energy transition should be intelligent energy transition mm -hmm. because sometimes we can see these transitions as a fight, as an um, interest um, uh, incompatibilities between some, some sectors and some other sectors. So that I think that the, the key to achieve an intelligent energy transition is cooperation. Absolutely. So I think that it is very important that sectors that uh, ha had been so far separated somehow, mm -hmm. like automobile sector or electrical sector now must come together and cooperate because the future will belong to those companies that can think out of the box and be together to pro to create new new services and new products in this in this field excellent thank you so much so I, if i understand your you're delivering green energy, you're permitting our customer, your customers to use electrical car, you incentivize your employees, and you make money, of course, of selling the energy. So it's, it's, it's good business, huh? Thank you so much. Thanks so. How about you, Ricardo? First of all, thank you, thank you very much for, uh, for the invitation. It's a oh, great player to be, to be here sharing some ideas. Uh, actually, I, I met uh, Carlos 10 years ago when he started in this electromobility because I was in the early stage, I was uh, doing something uh, related to this topic. But uh, I see that you continue. <laughs> I move off other things, but uh, you are really an expert due to the fact of this uh, long-term vision that uh, the evolution of electromobility. So you were pointing out about uh, uh, that, uh, I mean, the, the, the dramatic situation that we are living in terms of uh, if we continue uh, keeping doing how we are doing, we will achieve, we will reach these three, three degrees. Uh, so, I mean, we are running out of time. Uh, this is true. Uh, the good thing is that uh, we are on time. Yeah. We're on time right now, but we need to do, some, we need to do something. Mm -hmm. uh, last week in the, in the Climate Change Summit in New York, there, are, there were a lot of uh, governance, a uh, lot of... Uh, NL was there. Yeah, we, we were, were there, there with yeah. our CEO. Uh, with commitment uh, of uh, private uh, uh, companies, public companies, a lot of uh, stakeholders, but uh, probably it's not enough. It's not enough because this is not a question of uh, big companies or some specific governance. Well, we need to put our efforts in common in order to see how we can try to make this contribution. In this sense, I, I have to say that uh, uh, an engineer uh, and when I started working in this electromobility 10 years ago, later on energy efficiency, uh, then I was moving to the distribution business where I'm working right now for we are operating uh, grids, uh, working on microgrids, uh, moving to uh, different places, South America. You realize sometimes you see this climate change, something that is very far from you. It's mm. not touching. Mm. It's not touching your heart. So uh, when I was uh, a child, I was... Uh, looking at the hunger uh, in Africa, so there were a lot of, uh, you had to donate something. Yeah. And it was like to, to, to clear your mind to, to, okay, you were putting some money and it was not something that it was not the, not, nothing to do with me. Yeah. Now you traveling and looking at uh, nearby you, you see that it's something that uh, we have a lot of fats that are affecting uh, our day to day in terms of uh, climate change, hurricanes, mm. big storms where uh, it just sent, uh, we didn't have this kind of uh, weather condition, dramatic weather condition. So, and when you are traveling to other places, I was in charge also for uh, microgrid development in uh, isolated uh, area because in our concession areas, we were all the customers that uh, we were not able to connect with uh, grid extension. We were providing some. Uh, microgrid solution, isolated uh, microgrid solution. And I, th I think we've done something together. 
So we yeah. have done something together in yeah. South America. Kind South of America, yeah, probably. Absolutely, probably. worked again. Yeah. So when we were there, uh, when we were in Colombia, Peru, looking at these places, and you see that uh, when you are providing this kind of solution, in fact, we were doing this uh, project with you in uh, in Colombia, uh, and we were doing the kickoff. You see that. Uh, uh, places where the electricity were not uh, from 50 years or probably they have a little gen set yeah. to get some uh, small hours during the day uh, electricity so you see that in reality you are transforming something exactly you are doing something you're bringing value the real value bringing value and you are in reality transforming people's life exactly so this is something that is touching you a lot because you see the, the the boys, you see the people. Now they are can do things that uh, they uh, didn't used to do. Yeah. So uh, watching TV, mm. uh, the football uh, national team, uh, try to have a fridge mm. to keep the food, and then they can go to the market uh, three, four hours working. Study, chain, study, start creating some value. Study in the evening for the kids. Studying for the light. for the evening. That's yeah. true. Even playing, they couldn't play to the football. Now they can read. Mm. They were connecting the tablets. Yeah. Because they they had tablets, but with no electricity. Yeah. So uh, to drink a, a beer, mm. a cold beer. Mm. So things that uh, probably for us is something very useful, or we are doing every day, but uh, we don't realize that other people are not. Uh, Mm. doing this so you see uh, how they are smiling and it's something that you are creating this value electricity at the end is creating economic growth mm. they can evolve they can develop themselves and this is something that uh, we need to we need to is mm. our responsibility yeah. so i feel that what what you say is the driver is actually the driver for you as a person as well to see that what you're when you're bringing electricity you're also bringing life quality to the people yeah, you are yeah. transforming people's life in this sense excellent so at, at the end a uh, couple of things more um, this uh, energy transition that uh, with uh, big words no, we we know very well the challenges the tendency that we need to tackle in uh, in our grids uh, we see that uh, we are a catalyzer we are a neighbor mm. because if we want to integrate all these uh, renewables mm. uh, decentralization renewables. Uh, we want to also create more uh, electricity sources for heating, cooling, electromobility that we mentioned before. We need to make our grids more uh, flexible. Mm. We need to make our grids more resilient to all the things that are coming because everything will come on the low voltage, medium voltage grids. So uh, try to also activate other services for demand response, flexibility, is something essential. So digitalization, in, in our sense, is a, a, our main driver in order to uh, go for the carbonization. Mm. Because at the end, it's one of the main vectors that uh, can provide this kind of uh, clear, clear uh, approach. So um, I will uh, fin finalize saying that when you are working on a company that is uh, transmitting these values, mm on how to open this power to uh, other people, how we can try to improve uh, people's life. This is, and is, you are aligned with your uh, personal value. Mm -hmm. This is uh, giving you a lot of, I would say, uh, peaceful. Yes. Because uh, you are not having some uh, problems on doing things that uh, you are not pretending or uh, trying to you're, be. You're aligned with your you values. You are aligned with your values. So this is something that uh, is giving you the chance to give more than 100 mm percent -hmm. because you are aligned your personal life with the and you see also that the company um, in spite of publishing all these uh, big statements or, mm -hmm. or saying that we are we are doing in the real world things mm -hmm. on how we are moving on this uh, carbon neutral mm -hmm. or we are trying to disposal uh, thermal generation or we are moving forward on the renewables or electromobility and so on, leading, mm -hmm. leading and trying to give a good example and best practice to other uh, industry. 
this is something that is, uh, gives you a lot of satisfaction. Yeah. So what I hear the driver here is to make sure that the company communicates to employees, to make sure that the, you align with the, comp the, the employee's value. And I think it's a way also to attract talents because more and more it's important to have uh, communicate around what you stand for and that you're contributing to a better world but while doing good business. And then you will get people on board as well. Huh? Savi, do you have one thing you want to share uh, uh, about the drivers as well? Yeah, maybe just rebounding on what we just said uh, just now on the people side. What we launched in Schneider Electric, which uh, make us proud, is uh, some a year ago we launched an initiative called Act for Green, where every employee every day of the year are invited to come with their green ideas to decarbonize ourselves. So as you just alluded to, it's not something which is only driven by Jean-Pascal Tricois, which you heard yesterday. Uh, which has a bold vision on climate and carbon, but so much uh, inviting our employees to come with their own ideas. Uh, maybe what I can add is some examples of what we can do as a company. You've heard my boss. So my boss yesterday was great in telling you how much we are committed to be zero carbon at three levels. Zero carbon for ourselves, so our operations have to be zero carbon. I'll share you how we're going to be doing it. Uh, suppliers, we spent the entire day yesterday with our strategic suppliers and they have to help us be zero carbon, zero logistics, zero carbon logistics in some time. Uh, circular materials, you know, they have to surprise us and invent an upstream supply chain which has to be zero carbon, which is the most complex challenge which we have. And downstream, we help our customers save CO2. And we've quantified that last year, 51 million tons of CO2 were saved by Schneider Technologies in our customers assets, meaning modernizing a building, modernizing a data center. So I'm going to focus on the center, which is us, our operations. But, you know, be aware that the carbon strategy, which Jean-Pascal alluded to, covers uh, from the mine, where the, 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 the copper and the plastics or whatever the fuel is extracted back to the customers is really covered by the strategy. Mm -hmm. But because of today is going to be focused on utilities and electric electricity and the energy we use, I will focus on some examples, Carola, on mm -hmm. what we do uh, internally. So we're, first, we, we sign commitments. You know, we are committed to be 100% uh, renewable electricity, uh, which is RE100, which is a climate group initiative to which we've signed. We are today at 45% of our electricity, which is uh, renewable. And end of next year will be 80%. So how do we do? We use gentlemen like people on stage with me. We have, um, we are using, we are buying electricity from uh, dedicated off-site uh, solar farms, dedicated on-site windmills uh, from from those companies. But we also use our gear on our factories, on our sites. We have microgrid at Schneider Electric sites where we can produce electricity with some minimal capacity optimize energy consumption, store that electricity for when you know electricity uh, is in need or where cost advantage plays for, for us. So we have microgrids as well. And just this week, we announced 13 of our sites with net zero carbon. So we have 13 of our sites today, already 10 factories at Shanda, which are already net zero. With that uh, ecosystem of on-site generation, microgrid, with energy efficiency. So that's, and for the rest, what we cannot buy from power purchase agreement with utilities and what we are not producing on our sites, then we, we seek green tariffs. We seek from utilities, wherever we operate, the players which locally can sell us you know, hydro energy, uh, wind energy, say at the plug. Mm -hmm. So with that three-pronged approach, we really are geared towards being 100% renewable. On mobility, I like your points on mobility. We have uh, close to 16,000 vehicles at Schneider Electric, which are leased car or trucks. And again, we are committed to 100% electrical mobility, of course. And not only the vehicles have to be electrical, but the electricity fueling those vehicles has to be renewable. So we are engaged into a journey which is to transform the fleet with all the changes which will impact from the finance and HR perspective, different costs, initial costs, which are usually higher, but the total cost of ownership, which can be favorable. So we need to change the paradigm of looking at vehicles in the way we, we buy, we lease. So that's, uh, again, a journey in which we are engaged. So just to illustrate how we are uh, transforming ourselves upstream, ourselves, you know, energy and electricity. So we are electrifying everything mm. and making everything renewable. And customers, I would need a bit more time, but really you are, we are going ahead very far in quantifying how much real tons of CO2 are really not uh, emitted in the atmosphere because of a retrofit, because of a brownfield project, and that's something we are very proud of. And, and it has an impact on our bottom line? 
So the, the good thing is, if I look at our operations, people say, you know, Xavier, if we buy green electricity, so how much is the increase of the cost? Genuinely, vetted by our auditors and our finance, we are making savings on the way. Uh, this year alone, we'll be saving close to a million euro on, on a bill, uh, which is um, slightly bigger, of an ed electricity cost because of that decision. So we can find those vendors, power purchase agreements, where we do commit to purchase megawatt hours and gigawatt hours for some time. There's a, a say a trade-off, if you wish. We are committed to buy for a certain number of years, mm. but then we get short-term P&L impact. So there is no negative impact, there is positive impact. Usually we don't capex ourselves, we are not seeing ourselves as a producer of energy. Those companies, uh, we respect them for what they can do best. So we tend to leverage those specialists to provide the electrons to us and we buy those electrons from them, but we are not ourselves investing in power generation capacity. We are getting specialists come and invest onto our sites. So to your question, it is not detrimental and it's favorable to our bottom line as well. That's what I wanted to hear, because yeah. I'm so convinced that the better planet is better business as well. So I want to add something here. There are some places where so we so win. so passionate. No, no, but just, I don't want to let you leave with that. <laughs> it's always cheaper. It sometimes comes with a set of burdens. Sometimes it's more expensive. Yeah. Sometimes it's cheaper. Mm. Uh, the overall equation is that we are able to make, to make it as an even financially relevant experience, but I'm not willing to say that it's always cheaper. Mm. No, and it, it, it goes sometimes with commitment. And as you know, we don't like to commit to buy HUC for eight, 10, nine years. So it's not something which we usually like to do. So we force ourselves to take risks. Mm. We force ourselves to commit, which somehow is a cost, if you wish. But the short term PL is overall positive. Mm. Back Thank to you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I told you guys that once you start talking, it's so passionate, we'll never be able to stop and think. I'm not the only one on stage. No, it seems, it's, eh? it's very good. It's very good. I mean, it, that's why we're here. We're all here because we like what we're doing. So thank you, Xavier. Excellent. Um, when, it, when it comes to, um, to making business out of sustainability, what is the role of innovation and how, how do we um, accelerate? Uh, by, for example, uh, using outside ideas. Can you give one example on, on, on what you've done in Enel to start with? Yes, about, uh, about innovation. Uh, I mean, for, for us, technology, I have to say that in decarbonization, one of the key issues will be technology. It was said yesterday. Mm -hmm. Due to the fact that this uh, fallen cost uh, is permitting us to do things in a way that uh, we uh, didn't used to do. Mm. So, and we can try to do it in a more profitable way. Mm. So I think it's part of the, of the equation. is the momentum and also how the technology is enabling us to do the things in a, in a, in a better way, achieving this uh, feasibility in terms of economics that uh, was not uh, before. In terms of innovation, it's something that uh, we are also very passionate on that because uh, several years ago, we uh, launched an open innovation, yep. open innovability model. We have this uh, strange word that is the combination of innovation plus sustainability, that is innovability, mm -hmm. that uh, is part of the same equation. Because at the end, we want to create this equation that is uh, sustainability equals uh, long-term value creation. Yep. So it's something that is the challenge. So in this innovation, it's true that uh, we have a lot of good people inside our company, a lot of talented people, but uh, there are more smarter and talented people outside, fortunately. So we wanted also to activate these, uh, these people through a, a network of uh, what we call hubs and labs. Mm. We have t 10 hubs and, uh, and 11 uh, labs. What, we are, what, what are we doing in those? We have in a specific uh, market, in the US, Silicon Valley, in Spain, in uh, Israel, Israel in Haifa, uh, also in, uh, in Moscow, in Brazil, in Chile, in all, over the, all, all over the world, we have a lot of antennas that mm -hmm. are uh, collecting the ideas about what is the ecosystem, um, uh, getting in contact with the startups, uh, with uh, ECMEs, and now internally we are uh, collecting which are the challenges that we have internally mm -hmm. in our business. Where, where are the pains? Mm -hmm. Where are our needs internally with our different departments? We are collecting them and we are sending out all this information to these hubs according to which are their uh, competences because probably we have some for drones or for robots or for IoT. We have a specific center that we detected that are 
a majority of startups or ecosystem in a specific area. For example, in Haifa, for cybersecurity, mm. or drones, or these kind of things. Uh, flexibility on California in the Silicon Valley. So, and we are working with them in order to get some ideas and organize boot camps. Okay. So we are sending out the people to start digging a little bit with these companies, selecting which are the best ideas, and later on making pilots uh, proof of concept. Excellent. So this is something that is accelerating a lot the time to market and, uh, and also try to emerge specific ideas that probably we are not in a way to, to get them. I have to say that so far in these last three years, we have been in contact with more than 3,000 startups. Oh. We have been uh, in place uh, all over NL uh, more than 200 pilots projects in our business, uh, more than 20, because our idea is start to test, to learn, and then try to scale up. So test fast, fail fast, or fail improve fast, fast. Sadly, so you fail a lot. You fail a lot. So right. the, fa the uh, to fail is permitted. Mm -hmm. I think it's something it's that it's a learning. Yeah, it's, it's a learning. It's a learning. It's yeah, a learning. Sure. So you are learning a lot from doing the things in a bad way. And it's giving you other possibility, activating some uh, the other brains people mm -hmm. in order to get the solution in a faster way and probably looking at also. And we are incorporating this dimension of sustainability and probably other approaches with circular economy in a, by default. Okay. So it's something that uh, when we are doing something, we need to analyze if this could be done. The whole value chain. The whole value chain. Because at the end, we realized that the, 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 the financing market also is uh, very tuned, very aligned with this kind of values, with the agenda, sure. Sustainable Development Goals agenda, that at the end is 2030 is our, let's say, human being agenda. So if we are able to uh, beat all these uh, challenges, we will be in a better war. So we see that, uh, for example, our in, in investor, uh, what is called uh, environmental, social, and governance investor, they are increasing also in our capital. Mm -hmm. And we, you uh, mentioned also the first ever uh, sustainable development goal, Link Bond, in which it was very uh, successful. Yep. With, uh, we collect in the market more than $1.5 billion dollars with uh, 155 basic points wow. only. So it's very comparable with the typical green bond or bonds. So you're saying also that you're not only talking about uh, technical innovation, but we're also talking about business innovation. Business yeah. innovation. Or financial business innovation. Financial I mean, innovation, climate, climate, in, climate finance. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Because at the end, the market, I mean, it will take some time, but uh, we see that by default, this kind of bonds, this kind of approach mm. will be the typical approach in the in the financial market. Mm. It will take some time, mm. but, but it's, it's something that you need to do. You're pitching yourself as a, you a to, forerunner. Yeah, forerunner, you have to do it. You have to demonstrate that it's not, uh, uh, it's compatible mm. to do the things. Business, mm -hmm. to create value, and also in a sustainable way, creating value, engagement with the community, where the places we are, where we are operating. Mm. And also this uh, very strong link with the innovation, technology, for improving and try to make things more profitable and change with the with the climate. Excellent, thank you very much. Thank you. Very Would you much. like to add one thing or two, uh, Carlos, about that? There's not much to say because when you put together an under, uh, uh, someone coming from Andalusia <laughs> and you put to leave it him in, in in Italy, then you you obtain this uh, kind of speaker that. <laughs> <laughs> has expressed very well all the possibilities in innovation. But if you if you allow me to, to tell sure. a couple of things, uh, I would say, yes, electrification and renewables. That's the same. Uh, in renewables, Iberdrola has innovated uh, uh, very clearly because it has been part of Gamesa. You know, now it's Gamesa Siemens, and it has been really in the front line of the creation of technology mm. in the world. And now we are also pioneers in offshore um, wind uh, farms. So we are really creating uh, the technology and put it, putting it into practice real, at, at a real moment. So we are really... Uh, creating the future in that field, but it's, it's not my field, mm -hmm. the renewables. So I would like to, to give a small example in what we are doing in, 
in smart solutions because uh, we generate re um, clean uh, energy, mm -hmm. but we also empower our customers by giving them the possibility to have access to a smart solutions, which uh, mm, which are uh, kind of uh, products and services like smart solar or smart home or smart mobility. And that's where we are really also innovating not only in technology, but also in retailing, because sometimes the real challenge is not uh, put in the technology, but all, but uh, is mainly in the in the way you market it, and you and you allow the customers to use something new that yeah. ha hadn't been used so far. So, uh, but now nowadays, so. Uh, uh, smart mobility is really a story of innovation because we started, as Ricardo has said before, 10 years ago and uh, in this time we have developed 16 projects, mm -hmm. uh, 16, 16 uh, pilot demonstration and innovation projects that have allowed us to create our knowledge in uh, smart mobility management or in charging, green charging uh, management systems. And we have created our in-house uh, uh, management system that allows us to give uh, products and services to our customers. Uh, we have uh, charged we have charged motorbikes, we have charged buses, we have charged fleets, and uh, and, and in that way we have participated in lots and lots of uh, different. Uh, demonstration projects in collaboration with OEMs, in collaboration with public administrations, mm -hmm. uh, towns and regional uh, administrations. And this experience of collaboration, uh, as I was telling before, boundaries of the sectors are disappearing. And I think that the experience to put together our own uh, yes. experience and knowledge Synergies is experience. being very fruitful yeah. for the for the for the business because we are really creating new systems new products that are being put in, in the market for the first time mm -hmm. ever so i think that uh, uh, that that was uh, what what uh, allows us and uh, of course uh, we have changed for being a group of, of five people to be now more than 40 people in smart mobility. Uh, we have uh, now the goals to install in Spain 25,000 charging points by the end of 2021 Very ambitious. in houses, yeah. in companies, in public places to, ch to and public charging. The, uh, um, the roads as well and the highways. Yes, in the highways and, okay. and so the, the, the goals are very, very um, challenging for us and also we, we, have, we are now the first Spanish company to, to belong to the EV100 scheme of uh, the climate group and we have the commitment to have 3,500 uh, car, electric cars in our company uh, in the next year. So I think that the, the experience of innovation in this field has been very exciting because we feel really that we are creating the future in electromobility. Thank you so much. And I think talking about innovation, I hope that all of you have seen the, the launch that we have when it comes to the uh, uh, SF6 free switch gears that we have launched. So for the first time ever, we have a, a new product that is completely uh, working with gas and vacuum. And it's, I think it's a really game changer for, for the utilities. It's a game changer also for our, uh, all other customers who wants to contribute to reducing the environmental footprint. Uh, anything else about innovation from Schneider, uh, Xavier? Maybe one thing, uh, we, we use uh, is respectfully the two words innovation or sustainability, one for the other. For us, this is really the same. Sustainability yep. is all, all about innovation. And when I talked earlier about decarbonizing or becoming uh, you know, one planet uh, prosperity compatible, uh, upstream the innovations we make today are all materials, so zero SF6, recycled plastics uh, enabled uh, circuit breakers where we have a commitment to double the quantity of recycled plastics in our product, to have all the packaging uh, recycled or certified. It's all about innovation in the way we operate, starting with us, you know, each of us, you know, the way we consume electricity, we, we drive to the office, 
uh, we buy equipment, we lease. I'm also in charge of real estate, which workplace, which offices we lease and rent. And, and, it, and, and, and how it much space we have an office? Do we have an office at all? Should we have an office? Do exactly. An so office? it's all about just huh? having just enough uh, resources. And maybe the innovation which I would stop on, which is the way we market and sell, to your point, the services of Standard. Now we augment our salespeople to talk sustainability in a quantified manner. We want to give them proof points about how many tons of CO2 is it saving uh, compared to a baseline, how many uh, gigawatt hours is it saving, how much are you, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, going to gain on the CO2 journey. So we want to quantify. And the other biggest innovation we have is on business models. You know, circularity means a lot of new business models in our sector, taking back, retrofitting, repairing, and it brings us so many innovations. You know, we use connected objects, IoT, but then it's about finding a way to uh, work with our customers to give them a, a, to enjoy a longer lifespan with our assets. For our team in services to take back equipment, bring them back to a second life, or upgrade them to a, a standard which can last for the next 10 years, to bring them into a responsible end of life, so that they, the customers enjoy a fully uh, a full peace of mind, you know, from all aspects. So there's a lot of innovation happening in Schneider Electric in the sector today in terms of making the most of the resources, keeping them at the best performing performance ever, and taking back the gear. Uh, IoT allows us to know at each point of time what's happening with that gear. Should we send a service engineer? Should we take it back? Should we send a patch? Should we take it back because it's you know, it has its own life? We do it for many of our eco-structure gear, uh, speed drive, medium voltage equipment, circuit breakers, UPSs, transformer, you name it. You know, we really have a full set of innovations which go back to pricing models. How do we look at profitability? How do we engage into everlasting relationship with customers? So maybe that's the one I would like to stress the most, Carola, is the innovation downstream in the business models to get the most of the mm. uh, technology. Yeah, and also innovation with our customers. Of course. And, and I think here we have two examples on where we have worked together a lot on, on sitting down and saying, okay, what, what, is, what would make you more profitable and what is missing? And, and how can we together innovate something that, that in the future will make both of us uh, more, more uh, successful and contributing also to, to a better planet. And uh, exactly like, uh, like you're doing, we have this innovation at the edge that we started uh, last year where we, we have a fund which is we are using with our customers to identify startups and companies that we believe can help us to accelerate to find a solution together with you. And I think that's, that's something that we shows also our commitment on, on both sustainability and accelerating uh, the solutions. So Did you want to use the time for a question yes, maybe from the room? Yes, we have two minutes and 55 seconds left. Uh, so I hope we have some questions. In, thank, uh, thank you so very much, gentlemen, for your, for your sharing. I think we have uh, three minutes left for, for questions, and I hope we have some questions and comments. Anyone in the room? We must have been very, very clear. In, any sharing you want to do on what you have seen elsewhere or what you are doing yourself? Nothing. You're shy? No? Okay, well, if you have no questions, then I think we have been very clear. Can I just uh, point uh, a small point that yep. I have forgotten that uh, <coughs> to say that Iberdrola also has a uh, um, seed capital uh, uh, company called Persio that uh, helps startups, part participates in startups that had to have to do with our uh, potential business uh, interests and recently we have taken uh, part of a company here in, in Catalonia called Wallbox. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very good example of how the energy transition uh, is going to create employment, is going to create uh, wealthy and, and I think that we are very proud to this kind of example of participation startups that have uh, really a all the room to, to develop and to make good businesses in electromobility in the future. Thank you. Anything you're particularly proud of do you want to share as a last word? In reality, I will say that uh, we, are, we are on time. We want to stretch out uh, the collaboration with, uh, with all of you. And we would like also to team up to, to hear about uh, proposal. And I mean, I will be 
more than uh, happy to, to share with you and try to talk about uh, potential collaboration in things. Thank you. You're proud of something? No, thank you very much. I, I enjoyed uh, learning from your initiatives. No, I think we have uh, the decade, the next decade has been declared as a climate decade, you yep. know, in New York. Uh, it seems we have many things ready, but uh, the pace has to accelerate. Exactly. So I think we need this ecosystem to work much faster together. Yeah. Because even if all of us claim we have a solution, we are ready to, we know the adoption is yet too slow. Yes. So I think I think these collaborations and forums are there for us to accelerate because we really need to accelerate. That is true. Uh, even if uh, many of you in the room are having some part of the solution, we are very far from being there. Yeah. So no, it's, it's a good that's conclusion. That's the perception it, I have. We, we know the solution is there. We're all aware of the, the, the scary part. You have a question? Yeah, just, sorry. Just a little question. Sure. Hello. I'm a okay. I'm a, a journalist okay. from uh, France. Do you hear me? Bienvenue. Yeah, okay. Yes, um, I just would like to know if you were young, if you were a young student today, in what field would you work? Are we not all young still? Energy. <laughs> but more precisely, you talked about uh, circular economy, new business model. I have uh, four kids at home. Many of them are much younger than I, by definition. So I think there's so much, so much things to do. Uh, starting up a new business, which inherently is green, sustainable, and all working in corporations like in this room. Many of them, uh, starting on the stage, are striving to change uh, one way or the other the way the build equipment is, is better, it's greener. So plenty of opportunities exist, uh, not only startups, but startups certainly are, are there. But people like these, Schneider, we welcome youngsters, uh, students, interns, uh, every day, by thousands. Any question in mind of yours? What, what yeah, well, the problem is the choice. Yeah. The choice. Uh, I think because it's a good too question. Many options, so many ways, yeah. Too many, yeah, yeah. yeah. There are many ways. It's a good question. Food, because and so if food textile, transparency, yeah. everything is needed. Mm. Instead of uh, focusing in leaving to our children a better world, we can also focus on leaving better children to our world. Because uh, and, uh, in, in my case, I have six children, and this is a kind of question that I am sure I have to to uh, to answer to my my kids. So, do you have girls? Yes, four girls. So uh, I also recommend her. Well, the the the, the, the first that is becoming uh, that is entering to the um, work market. I am recommending to he. She is uh, studying marketing, but I would. Uh, 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 help him, help her to to go to energy uh, companies because I I think it's plenty of opportunities in renewables, electromobility, smart solutions. I think it's a very good not only for technicians but also for lawyers, for marketing people because it's a kind of activity that gives opportunity to all kind of formation, even journalists as well. Mm. Yeah, my, my my answer will be I mean. Uh, uh, I have only two kids, uh, so <laughs> <laughs> I cannot give so, for the so, so many advices <laughs> uh, like Carlos. But um, uh, probably uh, I think that uh, innovation, innovation would be a, a good field. Mm. But uh, all kind of innovation, not only talking about technology, but how to make uh, innovation on the financing world, how to make some innovation on processes, on people, on business model, reengineering the process, rethinking the thing. To be b very, very critical, very try to be always uh, think out the box. So something that uh, at the end can make uh, some transformation from the from the from the bottom uh, to the top. And I think that is something that uh, for sure I will recommend. Try to be very and learning all the time because I sometimes I feel like a child because uh, you study a lot and you don't know anything. So because new things are coming new tendency, new trends, new things. So it's something that uh, sometimes you have to select very well what to read or probably you don't have any time to read. So uh, I, I will say that uh, try to be on this wave of innovation, touching all the different fields that I'm, at the end we are talking about how to combine things. It's not, not, not only technology, it's financing, it's business model, it's companies, everything is people, it's psychology. So we need to think our mentality, our culture, and try to be an example and to disseminate this kind of approach in the future. Th thank you for the advice, because honestly speaking, I'm still wondering what shall I do when I grow up? 
So I know it's a bit pathetic in my age, but I'm still curious of what can I do more with my life. So it's it's all about fighting waste, whatever waste it is, food waste, energy waste, carbon uh, waste. And, and, and to, to be honest, I'm really happy where I am because that's what I'm doing. I'm fighting waste and I help all my customers to fight wa waste. And, and I meet a lot of nice people that I thank very much for contributing on this panel. Thank you, Thank you for the question. Thank you. Thank you.